Are you an enthusiast of writing articles and publishing them, or is someone who just you know like covering news around your area? Then you should consider getting into the newspaper publishing business. Or you're someone who is already doing this and just wants to like scale up and learn more, then this video is for you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to the Business in Africa YouTube channel and thanks so much for watching. You know what I do all the time, right? I bring in people who have the experience so that we can tap into their experience and learn something new and just inspire you to get started. And there's this thing I always do all the time, right? Then the numbers are going to be popping up right here, somewhere here, the code. And you just need to drop it in the comment section below at the end of the video and go home with one of our gadgets, right? So I'm here today with a top, you know, someone who is on top of that business. So don't go away. I'll be introducing the guest after the break. Ladies and gentlemen, Africa, you're welcome back to the show. Today I'm with someone who is changing the african narrative someone who is rewriting the african script he is no other but the ceo or the chief executive officer and publisher of the advocate newspaper mr tabe tayang enobika welcome to the studio thank you very much uh, it's a pleasure being here in the african business talk uh and his fans and his listeners uh want to say that it's a pleasure uh, being with you all and i hope that we're going to have a very wonderful time exchanging and of course reading your comments and why not uh, give you feedback to whatever you expect to get from us on stage today well you just said just from the voice eh just the voice you hear you hear the baritone you know that this is someone who has a lot of experience now sincerely i know you you are the executive director of the cameroon media um, association of cameroon media professionals you have a lot of you know your cv is big can you just tell us more about who is who is Tabitha? Well, Tayang Enobukatabe is an African, uh, Cameroonian to reduce that. Um, I am uh, a major practitioner, I am a major professional. Uh, like you said, I am the executive director of the Cameroon Association of Media Professionals. Right. I am also the chief executive officer and publisher of the Advocate newspaper, which is the uh, loan uh, civil society organization led newspaper by the civil society for the civil society, where our slogan comes from for us by us. Right. Uh, I'm also involved in a lot of development, communication strategies, and planning activities and projects. Uh, I'm a consultant with the United Nations Center for mm -hmm. Democracy and Human Rights for Central Africa. Right. Uh, what else am I? <laughs> I, 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 I know we I can am, go on I and am, on. I am, I am. <laughs> the CV is so big. I told you guys that the CV is massive. He's worked with the UN, you know, with countries, setting up things. Now you've been doing this business, you know, the newspaper business for some while. For how long have you, you know, have you been into this? The Advocate Newspaper celebrated its fifth anniversary in December twenty twenty. Okay, that's it. Which means we are six years, like yeah, 2021 20, plus. Right. Uh, we started off as a, a baby, described as a baby born with teeth. Mm -hmm. We were biting at birth, uh, not biting in the general sense, but we were targeting our own audience. Right. So I think that for the past five and six years, I'm still counting, we have been able to mainstream democracy, human rights, and good governance in reporting. All right. So when we talk about newspaper publishing business, what exactly is this? What, what are the activities involved in this kind of business? For you know, for those of us who probably want to get into it, newspaper publishing is a whole lot. It starts from from news gathering. It gets to news editing. It gets to layout and design. Okay. From layout and design, it gets to production. From production, it gets to distribution. Mm -hmm. From distribution, it gets to recovery, or circulation and recovery. Wow. So it's a whole chain of activities, and uh, it, it, it is quite it is quite an interesting business. Mm -hmm. It's quite a, a business where people should, professionals should take interest in because it has a lot of uh, midpoints where you can enter and become a professional in your own domain. It is All not right. a business where you could just, I mean, uh, a one, it's a one-stop shopping business. Right, right. 
Now, you as a CEO, um, from what you just mentioned, it means you probably need so many different types of skills to do this. Do you, do you, do you have all these skills? Must you have them to be able to run this kind of business? I bet to say that um, when I started, it was like a one-man show. Mm -hmm. And the truth about it is that I have practically worked in two major newspapers. Okay. From scratch to finish. Right. Which means that I am able at this point in time to go to the field myself. First of all, to identify a news source. Okay. To get the news, to write the news, to edit the news, to lay out the news, mm -hmm. to print the news, to distribute the news, and to recover the sales from the article. So you've, you've gone through all of I this? Have, I have practically walked <laughs> throughout all of these stages, so it made it easy for me to understand the business. Right. I tell right. you, when I started the news uh, 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 project, I worked with uh, the, what I would call the, 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 the modern father of newspaper journalism, which is Eden Newspaper. All right. uh, from Eden Newspaper, I left, I worked with the Sun Newspaper, which is an intermediary, I would say, in the industry, right. but which is also doing so well. And when I left Eden, uh, when I left the Sun Newspaper, I decided to open the Advocate Newspaper. Right. So I've gone through a lot of mentorship, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think that it has played a lot in my career. I'm, I, I will not say I'm a successful newspaper owner. <laughs> you are, you are, please. I, I, I think, <laughs> I think I will say that I am, I am, I am, uh, I am not doing badly. Yeah, you are, you are going through the journey. I am, I think I am. That's why I said you are changing the narrative. So, Mr. Tabe, um. From every education, you have a lot of experience. You've been through all these processes from the other places that you've worked and also in your own business, the Advocate Newspaper. For someone who is like, you know, a young African who wants to get started in this kind of business, what would you say are the most important, like the most important skill that you must have? First, you must, you must know what you want to do. You must know the kind of reporting you want to report on. The moment you identify the kind of journalism you want to get yourself involved in, so that's the first step. Mm -hmm. And above all, you must have the nose for news, which means that you know, be able to identify the kind of news that you want to report. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a publisher, you're an editor, the first thing is that you're a journalist. If you're a newspaper reporter, the first thing is that you're a writer. All right. The most important skill is a skill to read. All right. If you don't read, you can't write. Right. I have trained over. 34 interns who are doing well now. And when they come, the first assignment I give them is reading. They will read for a full week. Because if you can't read, you definitely right. can't write. Right. Because you don't invent writing. Okay. You write what others have written. Right. Which means that you must read what others have written for you, you to write. write. Right. So I come from that conception whereby the first step in journalism is to be able to read. If you don't read, you can't write. Great. So what do you read? You read what you want to write. For me, I read a lot of development materials. I read a lot of piece work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I read a lot of thematic journalism, human rights, democracy, good governance, and the rule of law. Okay. I don't read a lot of politics. Because it's not your domain. It is not me. Yeah. I don't do... I don't do Paul Bian from the. Mm -hmm. I do their policies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do I do good governance. Mm -hmm. You know I don't report about uh, 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 people. I report about their activities and their actions. Right. Which means that my kind of journalism is thematic journalism. But then I grew up in a journalism sphere where news is hot news. So the nose for news, as a nose for any kind of information, is the same. Right. Which means that for you to get yourself involved into newspaper journalism, you must be a newsman. Great. Because if a reporter does not pick up the news, you as a publisher CEO must be able to pick up that news. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to be the person to direct your reporter to say, this is the news. I want it to be treated this way. Mm -hmm. So the most important skill for a newspaper publisher 
or a newspaper entrepreneur mm -hmm. is a nose for news. I tell you, we are in a situation in Cameroon, unlike other African countries, mm -hmm. where uh, newspaper owners are journalists. In some areas, in some other countries in Africa, newspaper owners are business people who invest That's in the mean, business. Right. That is where your, your institution comes from. Right, right. When I see business in Africa, right. I see I see a lot of a lot of, uh, of of power in what you do, because we need to change the narrative. Great. Great. At a certain point in time, we see an industry which is supposed to be managed by professionals, but they are managed by business people who have their own interests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What to me is news, because I'm a journalist, I'm a publisher, is different from an investor who runs a newspaper. Right. Because the investor's interest is his capital. Mm -hmm not the news but what is the news the news is what the editor thinks it is right, right. so at a certain point in time there is that challenge of uh we need to make money at the same time, at the same need time we need to do the news but i i would say i, would, I mean, not cutting you short i think um the the most important thing what you said was you know to be able to get this kind of business off the ground running mm -hmm. is is that you must be able to read that's the most important skill. Mm. And then, of course, you have notes for news. It means you need to know where the leads are. Yes. But you made another very interesting um, segregation here. You talked about the publisher and the businessman. Mm. Like, if you're coming in as an investor, as an entrepreneur, mm. uh, you have your own interest. Mm. And someone who is coming in as, you know, as the journalist, yeah, as the, the person, now. the editor in chief, yes. is the person who has to, you know, have those skills to yes. report what is new. Sure. So there must be some kind of you know correlation and some balance, right? But now what we are talking about here is uh, the the topic. Our topic was a uh, newspaper publishing as a business. Yes. Right. Somebody, um, you know, will be looking about how to make money from this business. Mm -hmm. Something we're, we're going to come to. Mm -hmm. But right now, I wanted to just know how. What are the, what are those? Give me like I like to put things in step form. Please do. Yeah. What are the five steps mm -hmm. that an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm can take to get into this kind of business? Good question there and very uh, important for me to say that. You said five, I, I, I want to reduce them to three, but then let me let me follow your five. No, no, no problem, no problem. Great. The first thing is for you to understand what you are venturing into, what market research have you done. Yeah. Uh, I will say that the market is very big. It is like a semi-virgin market. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. We have not exploited. We have, we have not exploited one, 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 one hundredth of the opportunities. Right. Which means that we still need about one hundred or two hundred more newspapers in Cameroon. Wow. Yes, for us to be able to to tell the news to to, to, report, to, to the report the news. The news. We, we we're not doing anything. In neighboring countries, we have. Over 500, 600, 1,000 newspapers. We have newspapers in Nigeria, neighboring Nigeria, that publishes morning, afternoon, evening, wow. seven times a week. Wow. The biggest in Cameroon is the Guardian Post of my brother, uh, Gar Christian, that does six times. Now, I mean, he's gone there six times a week. That's daily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we have newspapers in Nigeria that has. Uh, Three times a day. Morning edition, afternoon edition, evening edition for one day for seven times a week. Well, wow, guys, I mean, this is interesting. It's getting interesting. This goes to show that there is still a lot of potential in this, oh, yes. in this market. Oh, yes. and, and I'm always, my ears are always trying to, you know, oh, yes. tap into, oh, yes. into that. So that's the first thing. To start, you need to do your market research. You need to do your market research and niche. know the niche where you're covering. Going to. For me and the Advocate newspaper, we carved our niche into development journalism. All right. That's why you see us focusing a lot on human rights, democracy, the rule of law, and that we are there. Is that what they call the editorial of your newspaper? That is the editorial policy of the policy newspaper. Of newspaper. newspaper was born out of a need to advocate. Right. Then we have the name Advocate Newspaper, newspaper. because we come from the advocacy background. Right. So the second thing is to be able to, to have the required skills and talents to push your aim of achieving the goals of the market which you have carved for yourself. You need to hire the right staff. You need to hire the right staff. Right. And that's the problem in the country. Because at the beginning of the whole thing, 
there is little or no financing for you to be able to get quality stuff. Quality stuff. So what you need to do is to pick up the few you can, train them on the job, and also try to fit them in multitasking situations. That's the second thing. But then, no, just following up on that, you know, you you brought up something that's very important. At the same time, you, it's it's a step that you must take. But at the same time, I think I'm seeing that as a challenge. Yes, it is. Because you're saying that a lot of you, you, at, at the beginning, you are not going to have the right the, the money probably to hire the, mm -hmm. the best quality. Mm -hmm. So you need to train. And then, but what 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 what, what this thing usually happen right? That will bring people who just leave school, train them. And then very after a very short while they leave. How do you how do you solve that? Like, <laughs> it's a uh, it's, it's 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 challenging. All of, all of us all of us all of us left <laughs> somehow, right? Somehow, right? <laughs> I, I I don't know if you left where you were before <laughs> doing what you're doing, but I uh, I also left. I left like three times. Mm -hmm. all so right. to me, it is not wrong living. To me, it is it is what you gain before leaving and how you blow it back into the industry. Right, okay. If it is positive, if you leave, if you leave and open a municipal industry, you have added a plus to the industry. I think that's what I did. Yeah. So I think that even my bosses are okay with me now that they have a place to call to say, all right, I have this extra article, can you publish for me? Yeah, right. So, I mean, I left positively. That was another side, yeah. So that's the oh, second, second point. <laughs> that's the second point. Right. Uh, the third point, the third point would be, um, um, how to market your product? Mm -hmm. How do you market your product? Where, mm -hmm. where are you selling your product? Who are your subscribers? Who are, are, are your, your, your readers? Okay, it is difficult for us to have this question answered if you have not been able at a certain point in time to carve out this niche because. You see, I keep on coming back to challenges, but I want to say that uh, the steps are, are, are challenges which are overcome. Yes. yes. The moment you, over, you it comes as a step, then you climb, you overcome it, and then it becomes a success story. Right. So it's difficult for me to, to talk about steps without challenges. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the, 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 the steps are conquered challenges. This is not. Now I think I think what, what you're trying to say is from, from from what I understand, and I hope you guys also understand what he's saying here, is that you will not just monetize sales of the newspaper. Oh yeah. So there are other advantages mm. that you're going to have, like opening doors for other businesses to come in or for other things to gain, which is not just sales of newspaper. Yes. Also, I mean, assuming that the next question is about how do I make money. <laughs> That was the next question. Now. We're talking about business here. So how do you make money from this then? So the the, the, the industry has its ways. Exactly. There are there are advertorials. There are special write-ups. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they are they are paid publications. There are announcements mm -hmm. that come in. Okay. We have legal notices that come in for okay. you to announce. So it's not. All, I mean, uh, the, the the bad thing about the industry in Cameroon is that. Uh, government government advertisements are meant for the government newspaper Cameroon Tribune. Mm -hmm. So it is difficult for private newspapers to be able to access those government announcements to make money. Mm -hmm. But the truth also is that the government, in its own way, is also giving subvention to the private press. Okay, all right. Annually, it it is small, but at least. Something is coming in. It is, it is, it's, it's a source, it's of, making source of making some money. Yeah. We may not say it is enough to run the newspaper for four editions, mm -hmm. but at least you can at least buy papers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or pay for transportation of journalists mm -hmm. who go around to cover events. Mm -hmm. So I think that the main source of newspaper funding is one, sales, which is very low now with the crisis mm -hmm. because newspaper kiosks in the Northwest and Southwest regions are closed. So how do you sell? Mm -hmm. It's difficult. So the next source is we have announcements, uh, editorials, editorials, and all of that you can sell. Most newspapers have turned into uh, subscription forms now and into PDA versions of newspapers. Mm -hmm. Where they produce in PDA versions and then they sell the PDA versions online. Mm -hmm. So if you have about 1,000 subscribers, 
were yeah. taking yeah. the newspapers on, on PD versions for 400 francs or 500 francs, you can be able to sustain. But then it cannot cover your print cost. You need at least an advert to print a newspaper. Okay. All right. All right. Guys, you are hearing from the horse's own mouth someone who has been doing for how you said for how long you've been doing for more than five years now. Yeah, well, six years. About five, six years. He has been doing it over time and he knows this business. Sincerely, it's not easy, but it's something that you can still break even. And based on what he just said, now very quickly before we go to the end of this first thought, um, how much did you start your business with? About how much? About four million francs CFA. All right. So with that, you can comfortably, comfortably start a newspaper. Yes, business. I think with four million francs, here, four five million francs, you can you're, you're able. You're going to, to set up. You're going you to know, do all the things you, you you're mentioned. Going to, you're you going to your business. You're going um, to yeah, have an office rent space. Your office space. Have a small office space that you can start with, with, with for yeah, like one year, million, and then you progress. You progress. Mm. So guys, you just heard it from the CEO of the Advocate newspaper. He's a very big personality in this country, and as I told you. He said with 4 million francs or about 8,000 US dollars, you can set up this kind of business. There is this space for this business in Cameroon. And if you're watching us from wherever you are in Africa, you can think of going into this business. We've come to the end of the first session of the show. And thank you for still watching. We are going to go now to Discover Africa, the second section, where we'll find out if the CEO here seated knows his continent, Africa. Don't move a muscle. I'll be right back after the break. Hello, Africa. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Business in Africa talk show. I'm still here in the studio with the CEO of the Advocate newspaper, Mr. Tabe Tayan Enobika. Now, sir, what we are here is Discover Africa. Okay. Yeah, this plot is not related to business. We are now going to be finding out if you know your continent. And the idea of this slot too as well is also to find out if you watching know the continent Africa and hopefully you are going to learn something new from the questions that we're going to ask you here. So are you ready? Why not? Why not? <laughs> Africa Africa is a, is a continent uh, with a lot of uh, potential. So I want to imagine that the basket here is full of potential. <laughs> right. right. So I'll be asking you 10 questions, multiple choice questions. And I hope you get all the time, but if you don't, no problem. So, you will pick out your questions yourself, and I'll ask them out. Question number one, let's go. <laughs> CEO of the Advocate newspaper, I'll read them out. <laughs> Question number one reads, what is the area of land in Egypt which is below sea level? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know that. <laughs> Probably then you're going to do some kind of like, you know, to move to move Moscow. But you know, you know how we do that, right? Uh, no, let, let, let me, let me, let, 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 hey. let, let the audience. Okay, yeah, yeah, great. Hey, there, yeah, there are options. Are there right. Options? Yeah, the options, yeah. A, catchment area. B, upper volta. C, dampy area. And D, Quatara depression. Come again. Come with the question again. Which, what is the area of land in Egypt which is below sea level? A. A. Cashment area. B. Upper Volta. C. Damping area. And D. Quatera depression. No idea. So the CEO of the Advocate newspaper just turned that down. So officially it's a zero for a zero or ten. For him. Right. So bad. Yeah. So one wrong answer. Question number two. Let's write. All right. Question number two reads, ladies and gentlemen, which are the two small countries sandwiched by the borders of Uganda and Tanzania? A, Rwanda and Burundi. B, Rwanda and Tanzania. C, Rwanda and Gabon. D, Tanzania and Kenya. Uh, A. And that was the correct answer. The answer is A, Rwanda and Burundi. Question number three. Let's write. Of which country is Freetown the capital? A, Libya. B, Liberia. C, Sierra Leone. And D, Gabon. Uh, Freetown is Sierra Leone. And that was the correct answer. Freetown is the capital of Sierra Leone. Yeah. Two correct answers, one wrong. Question number four. 
Um, ta -da. All right, question number four reads, in which country is the Kalahari Desert? A, Botswana, B, Namibia, C, Zambia, and D, Zimbabwe. I, I think the Kalahari Desert is in Botswana. Put it up for this correct answer. Botswana is the correct answer. Question number five, let's go. Ta -da. Question number five reads, how many time zones are in Africa? A, four, B, five, C, six, and D, seven. C, six. And that was another correct answer. Four correct answers, one wrong. Question number six. Question number six reads, the Malagasy Republic is now called a. Mozambique B. Madagascar C. Lesotho and D. Swaziland Madagascar is the correct answer I say, how did you just say this with so much confidence? Have you been to Madagascar before? No, I think uh, I, I read a lot of uh, uh, South, South, South Africa. African history Right So it gives me the possibility of uh, uh, I do a lot of uh, short courses in South Africa and journalism All right. too. All right. okay. A lot of universities in Pretoria, Cape Town, wow. and down south. So. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. So, you know, the CEO just had it correct. Five correct answers, one wrong. Question number seven. Let's write. All right. Let's go. He just picked question number seven from the question box. We have... Question number seven. Which of the following desert is the largest hot desert and the third largest desert in the world after Antarctica and Arctic? One, or A, Sahara Desert, B, Kalahari Desert, C, Karo Desert, and D, Namib Desert. Kalahari? And ladies and gentlemen, the CEO of the Advocate newspaper just had that answer wrong. Oh. <laughs> The correct answer is the Sahara Desert. Oh, sorry. Question number eight. Let's write. Five right answers, two wrong answers. Question number eight. Ta -da! And let's find out. Let's find out how many is going to go home with. Question number eight reads: Which is Kenya's biggest port? Which is Kenya's biggest port? A. Mombasa port. B. Kenyatta port. C. Limumba ports and D. The Nairobi ports. Tick, tack, tick, tack, tick, tack. I wouldn't know for sure. Are you? Uh, can I? Can I make a guess? Yeah, for sure. You, you, it's, a, it's a game, right? C. And that was <laughs> the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I hope you guys are finding this, you know, you know, interesting and fun. You've been trying your answers yourself. Tell me how many answers you've had right now. Let's go. Question number nine. Right, question number nine. You have five correct answers, three wrong answers. So let's go. Question number nine. <laughs> question number nine. Let's go. Question number nine reads: What is known as the white gold of Egypt? A. Coco. B cotton, C rubber, and T oil. Let me find out if you know Egypt. Never been to Egypt, but then I think I've read a lot of Egyptians work on cotton. I think cotton is the right answer. Put it up for the CEO as he has an answer for us. And that is cotton. I mean, I can see you read a lot. You just said that you read a lot about Africa. Yes, I, I, I have thematic zones. I. Where, where, where I go about. Right. Six correct answers, three wrong. It's already six on ten, guys. Even if he fills the last one. But let's find out if he's going to make it. Question number ten, the last question. Let's write. Taking your time to pick the best, eh? Yeah. <laughs> question number ten, guys. Question number ten, let's write. Of which country 
is Cyrenaica a part? A, Kenya, B, Libya, C, Liberia, and D, Ethiopia. No, no, no response, sir. I mean, I've never heard about, I've yeah, never heard about Cyrenaica. Cyrenaica. Maybe, maybe Cyrenaica. I, I, I use this opportunity to, to learn, learn something, to learn something new about Africa. And that is the reason why we are here, guys. The right answer is Libya. Cyrenaica is found in Libya. Great. Great discovery. Right. So as I said, the CEO just had four wrong answers, six right answers, is still the past. Now, to how many African countries have you been to? Been to five African countries. Five African countries. So out of the four of them, you've been to five. 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 Which countries are those? Cameroon, Nigeria, Senegal, Burundi, Kenya. Wow. Well, I mean, you've been traveling around, you know, more than an average African, right? Ah, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I, I, I mean, most of the times, uh, uh, for work-related issues, issues yeah, uh, not really uh, pleasure and, and tourism. So I still look forward to enjoy my stay in African countries uh, at my own convenience. Right. So guys, you just heard from the CEO, he had six or ten, so he pretty much knows the continent Africa. So I don't know how, what, what has been your score, but if you've been following up, drop it in the comment section below to let me know how many you had right and what you had wrong, right? So keep connected or stay connected to the screen. We will be right back after the break with the last section of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. As you can see me, I'm already reading the Advocate newspaper. Because, of course, I'm right here with the CEO of this newspaper, right? Now, um, Mr. Tabetayan, yes, please. you are the CEO of Advocate newspaper. Let's talk a little about your, you know, this, this paper. Um, you told us a little about your editorial policy, but what can we say we can find in the Advocate newspaper on the daily? Or is it a weekly? The, the, the Advocate newspaper is a weekly publication of okay. the Cameroon Association of Media Professionals. Right. Uh, <clears throat> it is located with headquarters in Limbe mm -hmm. and has reporters all over the country. Right. Uh, uh, it covers news from all over the country. They report mainly in English for now. Okay. Don't, it's not a bilingual newspaper. Yes, so uh, basically, if you go to a newspaper, you find content on human rights, find content of the civil society reporting, find content on education, mm -hmm. you find content of women, you find content of peace, you find content of democracy and good governance. Uh, you will not find political content per se, mm -hmm. but you will find policies. Okay. There's a little bit a, a, a difference between politicking and policies. Okay. We, 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 we look at news more from more from the the point of view of the common man and the the, 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 the society than we look at news from the administration and the, the government. Great. So we, we're a little bit soft. And that's why I think I see here for us by us. Yes it is a new motto. For the civil society by the civil society. Mm -hmm. Uh, I tell you, we're in the context of the reform crisis, right? Um, you may want to know that uh, since 2016, right. we've not reported anything about the crisis. Right, okay. Yeah, because so we, it's politics. It is, we think that it is not a bit, right. because a lot of propaganda on both sides. So we think reporting the successes of one side is favoring the side and mm -hmm. disfavoring the other side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we, we stand a risk of, of uh, this is the truth, <clears throat> there's a risk of where do you belong. So to avoid that where do you belong, mm -hmm. we stay off it okay. and report what the community needs. Right. So we, 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 we focus on, if you look at the last edition. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Southwest Secondary Education, education. Boards, Updates, and so on and so forth. So those are advocacy news yeah, items. Advocacy news if you look at the edition of what women want, mm -hmm. it's about peace building and development. And I mean, we, we, we're talking about a crisis. They mm -hmm. were not on how many poor have been killed, who mm -hmm. killed who, mm -hmm. who, who died where. And we, we, we're not on that. Right. Okay. We, we're talking about what people want. So where can, I, where can we get this i mean like how you talk about distribution how do we get yes uh, we we are being distributed by um, uh, a network of 
internal distribution which has been created by the Advocate newspaper. Okay. The Advocate group has a distribution network okay. which distributes the newspapers. We also have kiosks, we have bookshops, mm -hmm. we have subscribers mm -hmm. uh, who get the newspapers and mail they are produced. So the biggest network that we have are hotels, uh, bookshops, newspaper vendors and kiosks and distributors. Those are the networks where you can have in Douala, you can have them at the competing bets. Okay. In 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 Yaoundé, you can have them at Guarantee Express with the publicity mm -hmm. at the agencies. In in Bamenda, you can have them at uh, City Chemist Roundabout. Okay. Uh, in Limbe, we have them at most of the bookshops in Limbe. In Boya, there are many major major press kiosk in in, in okay. Boya. All right. And everywhere you have a newspaper kiosk, you have the advocate newspaper. Guys, so if you are in Cameroon or are you also online? Do you also have like, yes, we have version? we have we have the advocate blog, which is a blog. Okay, all right. So uh, you can get um, advocateblogspot.com. Okay. We also run a very uh, interesting Facebook page, the advocate Facebook page, which is also rich in uh, content. So we are both offline and online. And online. Right. So some some. <clears throat> When we have urgent publications and we are not producing that week or that day, we, we use our blog and we sell the links and then we spread the links the and all of that. Okay. There, are some other, there are some other advertisers or news organs who believe more in online than offline publications. Right. Right. So we have those offers to so when you come, we we'll tell you what we have and you tell us what you want. Great, great. So guys, I wanted to say that if you're in Cameroon, you can get a copy or if you're out there, you can also you know contact them online or you get to their blog they have a blog they are on facebook and you get everything that's in here as well okay the numbers are on the screen the ceo's number i usually like to put his number his personal number here eh? uh, yeah. they're on the screen right now so if you want to talk any business if you want to you know do anything with the advocate newspaper contact this number that's the gift i'm giving you guys for watching the show right so you get in contact with the people who are doing it directly so thank you so much for coming sir I would say it was great having you but before you go i mean a lot of you know africa is watching us yeah. and believe me there are a lot of africans who um need to you know just need to be inspired and i know with your portfolio you can motivate someone out there so please just take a few moments and say a word to africa africa is great africans are great I think that the only thing we need to do is for us to come together, be a brother's keeper, and make Africa greater than we met it. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm blessed to be an African. I hope you too, you are blessed to be an African. Wow. You all heard it. Africa is great, and Africans are great. Are great. I love that slogan. Because that's why we are here. And believe me, the reason why you were called up is because you are changing the African narrative. You are rewriting the African script. So which country are you going to sign on? I I think I should go for for Sudan without saying whether it's South Sudan or Sudan. I think I'll go for Sudan. And why are you going for Sudan? Um, I live in a country which is rocked by crisis. All right. Which is similar to what Sudan has gone through. Okay. And I also draw a lot of inspiration from a Sudanese friend uh, who was my mentor during my Zipai Hate campaign. Uh, they gave me a lot of memories of what they went through during the, the crisis in Sudan. Okay. So it makes me to have that affinity and attachment to the, the Sudanese youths, yeah. especially. Really? Uh, I have a few friends of, of Sudan origin who, who, who fought hard to bring peace into in the country. country. Right. So I think that is one of those So you also hope there. that peace also comes so back to Cameroon? Right. My signature, my signature <laughs> on that map will right. draw an inspiration from the Sudanese experience Great. to bring a much needed peace in the southwest and northwest region of the country Cameroon where I come from. Great, great, great. Hey, if you're watching us from Sudan, hello, how are you doing? Drop in the comment section, let us know how to say good morning in your dialect or in your you know, local language. So please, just step up and sign on Sudan. And by the time you sign on this, we are going to add you to our WhatsApp group where the CEOs convey. Hi, Sudan. 
<laughs> so he has signed on Sudan and sincerely the reason why you're here the reason why you signed this board um, as I said it means you are changing the African narrative you're writing the African script and thank you so much for coming sincerely it was a, a very educative session it's my pleasure I wish I'll be back again but then there are so many other professionals so many other entrepreneurs so many other guests so I think it's about time I take my leave so that another person can take my seat. Right. Thank you so much, sir. It's a pleasure. And I'll see you in my next interview. Great, sir. Guys, we've come to the end of the show, and I hope you've been following, and I hope you went home with something, at least something, right? And if you want to start this kind of business, Mr. Tabata is always here to mentor you. If you want, you can contact him. His numbers are on the screen. If you want to be my guest on the show, contact me, and we will... <coughs> And we will schedule a shoot and you are going to talk to Africa. That's what this platform is here for. I just want to showcase our African businesses to the world, right? If you've been following us, click on the subscribe button if it's your first time. And if you're coming back, thank you for coming. I love you all, Africa. See you in my next video. One Love, Africa.